Hey, Don the Auction Professor here. Um, I got a haul today. Um, I was out for about six hours today, and that includes me stopping to get some lunch and spending ten minutes to talk to somebody, but um, I got six hours into this. I went by one of my pickers, and I went by a thrift store as well, so I've got some stuff on the floor, which I'll have to show you, and then all of this here. Um, I'm going to do one part of this in a separate video just because there's some very interesting pieces in here, something I just don't get very often. Um, these are vintage hi-fi items from a uh, record players. Um, they're GE ones, they're VR twos, they're really nice items. Um, they're looks like they're all new, but I will show you this uh, in a separate video. Um, I paid five bucks for these, and um, I, this is something I just don't get very often at all. I maybe have had two cartridges for old turntables, the uh, Tone Arms, twice all of last year. Um, and that was just a lucky spark, but this time I've got like 20 of them or more. So um, I will go over this in another video too, so um, I'll set this aside. But I paid five bucks for this. Um, I have no idea what it was worth when I got it. I didn't even really look at it. I just saw that it looked like needles. I know the cartridges can go for some good money. Um, I've had some vintage um, you know, hi-fi equipment before in the past. I know they always do very well. Just, just something I haven't run across very often. There's like 30 or 40 items in here. So I will set that aside and show you that in a separate video. I'll show you the, um, the close-up stuff uh, in just a minute here, but I'll show you the big items to get them out of the way, or the bigger items, I should say. Um, and again, this is from just two places, my picker and a thrift store. They're right in the same area. It just doesn't make sense to go to you know one without going to the other, so that's what I did. Um, but these were for my picker. Scooby-Doo, this was a dollar. These are the book record. Um, I always make sure the records are in good condition. Uh, it's a vintage one, 1981. Um, not, you know, Scooby-Doo where you era, you know, early 70s and uh, 60s, but it's still a good one. These should go for like eight, ten bucks. Again, I pay a dollar for these. Um, let's see here. Here's Pac-Man again, a dollar. Um, he's like eight, ten bucks again. That's what I put on most of these. Uh, here's some that I haven't seen before. Mercer Mayer. I've got uh, three of them. I believe this is from where the wild things are, but um, I can't find any comps on these. I, they can't be that rare, but again, eight, ten bucks a piece I'll probably put on. Maybe a little more, um, but I've got three of them, as you can see. Uh, Benji, eight bucks or so, eight, ten bucks. Care Bears, I usually always sell the Care Bears. They usually go fairly quick. Um, sometimes I'll put them together. I'm not sure what I'll do with this. Is I do have some Care Bear books and some other Care Bear items, some little figurines, kind of like these. Um, I may just throw it in a big lot. I um, usually do fairly well. I mean, I'll have a couple bucks and do it. it might get 20 or 30 easy. So, um, But that's the dollars out of these. Let me set these down. Um, I've got two of these, actually. I always like the when you can get multiples. Uh, this is an easy list, so if I throw it up on uh, Amazon and I can double list on eBay. Um, wartime Service Handbook, United Motors. It's a, a car, I guess, company. They did, um, I guess, car parts, brake parts. Um, you name it, it looks like they did it. Um, it's all about cars and batteries and things like that. Um, it's even got some soldiers in it. It's got some uh, Hitler cartoons in here, uh, making fun of Hitler. Um, they're both the same, um, both of these books. I saw some comps in these. They're like 30 bucks on their comps. So they were buying now. So if I put 57.50, I still may get that. They're in like mint condition. Originals, they're from like 1942 or 43 maybe. Uh, let's see here. 1943. So, um, you know, 57.50 a piece. It'll be a, you know, multiple item listing. So I'll put that I have two, quantity two. A uh, good item. Now this one here is pretty rare. I've got a couple other little magazines that are fairly rare. This is a General Mills um, annual report from 1948. Annual reports, if you're not aware, always sell very well. I've had many from Disney and early McDonald's uh, Corp and stuff like that. Um, a lot of the theme parks, the beers from the you know early, say, before 70 goes very well. I've never seen one this old. There's one from the 60s up on eBay now that's going in the 50 or 60 range is what it sold for. This may be 120, 125, who knows. It may be worth more than that. You can see Wheaties on the cover. It's a real early one. It's got factory construction and all kinds of stuff in it. Very interesting. I've never seen anything like it. It's got their products on the back. Um, nice, awesome illustration. Um, this alone, this page, somebody might be interested in copying. So, uh, again, I'm going to put like 125 maybe on it. Uh, another annual report, or is this a, uh, let's see what this is. This is um, da -da -da, 1947, so this is even earlier. Uh, it's something similar to that, it looks like. I don't think it's an annual report. 
It's just like a notice book on, on the company. I'm going to probably put at least 5750 on this one. I haven't looked it up, so I don't know on this one, but uh, at least 5750 um, and I think this is the last book. This, these were, those were a dollar. This was from the thrift store. This was 50 cents at the thrift store, 55 cents, something like that. Um, this is an early 80s, uh, like 82, 83. To know that it's early, it's got um, Pleasure Island. It's got Discovery Island in it still. Discovery Island's not there anymore, so um, that's a good thing to say, hey, this is an earlier one. And I think it had uh, some other items in here that are early. Um, Magic of Disney... Yeah, it's got some of the rides, too, that were switched out so that some of the rides that aren't there. Um, I don't believe the land's there anymore. Journey to an Ad Imagination's gone. Um, everybody loves Figment. I've seen this ride probably a hundred times. When we worked there, we could go to the parks for free anytime we wanted. We'd get friends in for free um, so many times a month and the whole works. Um, and we were given tickets. So I, I got to see all these. I got to play with them. I got to sit next to the, the actual rides, inside the rides, when they were turned off and... Um, it was a neat experience, but we've seen everything there. Um, this book I've had before, or of, of several versions of it, um, these probably go for about 14 15 bucks, maybe even more on some of the earlier ones. Um, good, good buy there. Okay, then I got these. These are shelf linings. These are by Renew. I see a lot of these kind of things at the thrift stores quite often. Um, I've gotten many items by this company. They're always wood items. This is very heavy for it. It's solid wood. It goes on top of a shelf. There's comps on eBay. There's only one, and it went for like 30 bucks or so. I want to buy it now. Um, but there is a spot, um, a uh, um, listing on Amazon. So I'm going to put these on Amazon for like 57 50 or higher, and then take what I can get. Again, I got two of these, brand new, sealed in the package, $7.99 a piece. So that was a good, quick, you know, 20 30 bucks a piece. Um, I'm going to show you the bag here on a close-up. Got a few other little things. These little mallets and hammers usually sell pretty good. Uh, but this was a dollar. Uh, I'll probably get 15 bucks for it, somewhere in that range. It's like a little gavel. Um, that's an interesting item. Let's get some of this out of the way. This was in the quarter bin. Uh, GameCube little case. Um, I usually sell these 8 10 bucks easy. So for a quarter, it was a good investment. Here's a vintage calculator. It's a Commodore model US-4. Um, I've had a US-3, uh, maybe even a US-1 before. I haven't had the US-4s before. These go for like 30, 40 bucks. Um, any of these Commodore early uh, ones. I think this is a Hong Kong. Um, I do not see that, but I'm pretty darn sure I've taken these apart before. Chances are it'll still work and everything. And then I've got some clothing. And again, I'm going to show you the rest of this here in a close-up. But I did get a bag of clothing here. Um, prices are still on it. It was all half price. Um, this is a $2.99. I'm sorry, it was $3.99, so I paid $1.99. Um, it's an anime. Um, quite interesting. I haven't seen this. I don't really know who they are, but I'll have to look that up. Uh, quite an interesting shirt for $1.99. I'm sure I'll get $40 bucks for it, somewhere $30, $40. Um, let's see here. This was in there too. This looks like uh, this was um, $5.99, so I paid $2.99. This is a Disney only. This is an exclusive from the Disneyland Resort, so it was only available there. It's a Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like a, it's a nice vintage style shirt. So for $2.99, uh, Disney item like this, it's a limited collectible. Again, you only could get this one at Disneyland uh, Resort. So I'm probably gonna say put uh, 40 bucks on a 45 and take what I can get. Um, here's a nice silk shirt, Oddball Hawaiian. Um, this was a, this is a Riscato Seta. Um, I'm sure I'm probably butchering the name. But these mod, funky style looking shirts, they sell fairly well for us. Uh, at least $34.50. Again, I don't try to buy any clothing unless I'm going to get 30 bucks minimum out of it in profit. Um, it's just the thing that I, I look out for. Um, here's a Tory Richard. Um, this is a nice early... Um, Hawaiian style. Um, I had to look this one up at the store, but again, if you look up everything, it's imported. It's 100% cotton, uh, cotton lawn. Uh, nice, interesting shirt. Again, 30, 40 bucks. And then let's see here, the last shirt. Um, and this looks almost new. Uh, it's a Harley Davidson. It's a large shirt, um, nice condition. Um, and I paid. Uh, let's see, it was 7.99, so I paid 3.99 for it. Um, usually these I get like uh, say. I don't know, it's like a thermal style shirt, so I'd say at least 34 bucks out of it. So that's what I got in the clothing. Um, and there's one more thing I think I'll show you real quick before we zoom in here. Um, but hang on, let's... Uh, 
all of these I got for eight bucks. These are vintage 1970s Playmobil figures. There's like 40 figures in here. Water buffalo, bison, um, Native Americans. Um, they're all marked glue. They're all 1970s. For eight bucks, I was happy. This guy was in there. This is a ghost. Uh, most every set that has a ghost, the ghost is worth money. This is 20 bucks on his own. I knew that. I've had him before. He's all there. Uh, the extra little chain and ball is in this box. Um, but most of them are complete, um, like the cowboy, the bandit figure here. Um, he's got his gun, his holsters, um, his hat's in the box, his other gun's in the box. They're nice and complete. The vehicle here is only worth like 8 bucks if you're lucky, so I'll probably sell this separately, if, if at all, and then just sell the rest of these. People are more interested in the figures, and they won't want to pay the extra few bucks for the vehicle. But again, all together here, if I sell this, is a lot. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. All the little guns, the tables... Uh, fences. Um, there's a lot of fire trucks. There's a, the whole set of vultures. There's like eight vultures here. Um, I'll probably get like 50 bucks for all of the figures here and then 20 more bucks for this and that was out of the eight bucks here. Everything I'm going to show you today I have $246 into. $246 for everything. That's all the records, all this stuff. Um, and just trying to estimate how much because of these needles here. Um, there's a high dollar in this stuff today. I spent some money more than I usually do because I am a cheap person when it comes to buying, but when the stuff's there, I don't care how much I gotta spend to get it if it's a good, huge profit for us. I got at least $2,000 in profit, maybe even more than that. I've got some nice, good records. Um, the clothing alone's a couple hundred bucks, so I'm literally looking at like two thousand plus dollars for my two hundred and forty six dollar investment. So, but let's show you some close ups here. Okay, well, this is some of the smaller items that I got. These are quarter items here, including these metal ashtrays, I guess you'd call them. Um, they're for the General uh, Motors transmission facilities here in the local area. Um, I wouldn't pay more than a quarter for these. They're only worth a couple bucks. I'll say I'll put $9.99 a piece on them. But for a quarter, they're worth buying. Um, even just if it was scrap aluminum, it's worth a quarter. Um, I also got some figures here. These were a quarter, too. Um, I'm not really sure who this is, but it's a, uh, let me see here. It's a Wallace Berries. I believe that's from uh, the Hallmark store. Uh, this I'll probably get like $7.99 around Christmas time. Um, here's a couple Pokemons. Again, these are out of the quarter bin. Some of these Pokemons I've sold for 10 to, say, 50 bucks a piece. Vintage Tomy. So these are vintage, early, good, decent ones. Uh, another G.I. Joe. For a quarter, I'll pick these up all day. I'll throw them in a big lot. I've probably got about 100 of these now. I always pick up the little plastic drivers. They always sell very well. This is an early one, probably 1950s. I might get, say, 10 bucks for this little dude on his own. Um, and again, I've bagged a lot of this to make it easy on myself. Um, like this item here, this is a 1960s. Uh, it's actually a candy container. Um, and I've got two of them, and the candy is actually still in there. Let's see if I can focus where you can see the bottom a little better. Uh, it's a little hard to see the bottom, but it's made in Hong Kong. It's a vintage original, 1960s, 70s. These I'll probably put, say... 2750 a piece on them and see what happens maybe even a little higher than that it's hard to say uh, all these vintage halloween items always sell this would go in the halloween section these were a quarter a piece too uh so you know stuff sells very well even at a quarter um and this here let's zoom out just a little bit here so you can get an overall view of it um this was with a bunch of cake supplies, cake making supplies. Most people wouldn't think a thing about this, but these are actually the Beatles. Um, it's got all of them in there. These will sell very well. Um, not super high dollar, but there's two sets complete. It's got, you know, Paul, Ringo, John, you know, the whole works, George. They're all here. There's two complete sets of them. Um, I'll probably look at, say, 20 bucks for these. I paid a dollar for a bunch of this stuff just thrown in a bin. It was all just cake supplies. I've got other cake supplies, too, but it wasn't worth much, so uh, I've discarded most of them. Um, but these are originals. They're not marketed by the uh, Beatles, per se, but they were available. The Go-Go Swinger, you'll see them listed as. You can look them up. They're about 10 bucks a set, and as I said, there's two complete sets here. Um, so that's another good profit there for my dollar. Let's put them back in the bag. Uh, these will be put together and then they'll just be uh, sold in a big lot. I'll probably sell the two lots together. 
Um, here's a Toho Godzilla figure. This, I believe, is Rodan. These I always sell, too. It's a rubber bendum kind of thing, um, but it's vintage. It's probably, say, 90s. Let's see. I think there's a date on it. 1994 Toho. Trendmasters made them, too. All these Godzilla figures I get at least 10 bucks for as a general rule. Um, some of the better ones are the larger ones. You might get up to 100 150 But again, this is a quarter out of a quarter toy bin with dinosaurs. And it's a Toho, so I always look for these. Know your vintage dinosaur horror characters. Um, this is a lot of two Casper from the 60s. They're lights, or, uh, light covers. Not in super, super condition. I may touch them up. I may not. Um, but for the dollar for the pair, I'd probably get 18 so or 18 or so bucks out of them. Um, let's dump out some more of these items here. And again, as I said, I've bagged all these up. Um, so we'll move some of these out of the way here so you can kind of see what I got. Um, I've talked about Gumby before. I always sell the Gumbies. Another vintage Gumby. This was a dollar on its own. Let's zoom out just a hair so you can see a little better. There we go. But Gumby a dollar. Again, I'll probably on Gumby himself, I'll probably get like 20 bucks out of him. Um, and I had two other Pokies not too long ago. I've got two more Pokies. This is the bigger size. These are bigger than the last ones I had. Um, one's vintage, uh, vintage older than the other one, um, but they're still going to sell. I'll at least get 10, 12 bucks a piece for these. Um, I think I paid a quarter or 50 cents for each one of these. Here's another oddball. Again, I buy army men and army figures all the time. I bought a bunch. Um, with this lot, not a bunch, I probably got 30 or 40 for a, a couple bucks, but this was in there. Um, this is actually the Dr. Doolittle Llama. Again, you have to know some of your characters to know, but a two-headed llama I knew instantly. It went to another piece that I have right now, um, but he's worth like 12 or 14 bucks, maybe even as high as 27 on the right day of the week. Um, good piece, not marked, but that's what it is. It's Dr. Doolittle. Uh, let's see here, what else we got here? Um, here's another vintage Godzilla that was in the same lot. This was like, a, I don't know, maybe a nickel or something. It's Hong Kong marked. It's a little uh, vintage, um, geez, Gamera is what this one is. The turtle, um, doesn't matter what size. This will probably still sell for like 8 10 bucks. It's a vintage Hong Kong, 1970s. So that's a good one. Um, this was a good one, too. Now, I see these all the time. This was another one of those quarter bins. This was with the bunch of cars. I think it is missing one little tiny piece there. Uh, maybe not. Um, if it's not missing the piece, this thing's worth about 30 bucks. This is a uh, Regal Eagle. It's 1970 Mattel. Um, and I think it's uh, Hot Birds is what it says on it. It's got the same color as the Hot Wheels, the red metallic that you see on the red lines. This is vintage original 1970. Um, Again, if it's not missing anything, it's probably worth 30 bucks. If it is missing something, I'll probably get 15 or 20. Um, everything else seems to work out, the tires, the wheels, all that stuff. So a decent piece for my investment. Um, all of these, these are charms. I paid a dollar for this bag. Um, may not look like much, but I'm, all the football ones like this, especially if they've got a team name on it. I don't think any of these have team names on it. Um, but either way, I'll get four to five bucks a piece for these. I'll put them up. They'll, they'll sit there for a little while. Some of these are metal, so their metal ones always sell better. Um, so I might have, say, 30 bucks in my hand here for my dollar investment on these. Most people have passed these up, too, So, but I won't. These are charms, um, um, Cracker Jack charms, basically. Early vintage metal ones from the 30s. Um, here's, let's get rid of the toys first out of this lot, and then I'm going to go to the records after we finish what's here. Um, everything you get is not worth a ton of money. Um, anything metal from the 70s or that says Mattel is usually decent. These are from the Littles. I don't know if you're familiar with the Littles, but these are from the furniture sets. It's actually marked on the bottom, uh, 1980 Hong Kong Mattel. Um, I think you can see that. Uh, these are fairly heavy. These are both uh, metal items. The set of these, I think I paid again a quarter. I got a bunch of items for a quarter today. Um, just what I look for, So, um, and this is what I found. These are actually in with Hot Wheels cars. Um, so I'll probably get, say, 15 bucks for the pair of these. A uh, good deal on my investment, both from the Littles. I always look for the characters, too, but none showed up, unfortunately. Um, these are just a couple of the 1990s original RoboCop figures. Um, I, for a quarter, I bought them. I've got other ones. I think I have one of the, the evil robots, too. Uh, probably just a couple bucks I'll get out of these, but for a quarter, it's worth it. Um, here's a good one, too. Thundercats I always buy. I've had a ton of Thundercats items. This is a vintage original. Um, I 
think this one starts with Weezy or Ouija or something along that line. It's an original. It's marked 1983 Telepix LJN Toys. It's the correct original. Uh, this was in a set with another figure, too. And that's how it was sold. Um, even with a little bit of paint damage, it's still in decent condition. I'll probably put, say, 2450 and take whatever on this one. Let's see here, let me get this back in this little bag so we can move on. I try to bag everything so they don't get scratched up anymore too, so everything gets bagged and it'll go on eventually in a numbered section so we can keep track of everything. Uh, let's see if I can get it back in its bag. Yeah, it helps to have these little Ziploc baggies. We use them all the time. I buy them by the thousand just for these little toys and stuff. And they sit in bins in these toys. My jewelry goes in these. Um, here's another little robot. Um, I'll probably put like 12, 14 on this one. He actually is jointed. Um, I think it's Mark II, yeah. Dick Productions DIC. It's a Playmates. Um, I've sold some of these little ones too for like 7 to 12 bucks. I don't remember the name of the character, but I'm sure I can find it by looking for it. I'll type in the date that this was made. Uh, 1994 Playmates, and then uh, I'll probably come up with it after a few minutes. Uh, and then pens, as I said. I always buy pens. I spent a dollar a piece on these. Um, one of the better ones, this one's worth eight or ten. I knew right off the bat it's an early 1930s Girl Scout. It was made to hang around the, the Girl Scout leader's neck. It's got a little clip on it. As I said, eight to twelve. Um, here's a Marathon Oil letter opener. And I think there's another piece of Marathon Oil in here. Yeah, there's two pieces of Marathon Oil. Uh, letter opener, I'll probably put, say, 2750 on it. It's got an eraser on the back, too. It's probably from the 40s or so. And here's a knife again, 2750. I'll probably put on this one and just take whatever. It may only be worth five, ten bucks, but I'll still make good money on it, especially at a dollar a piece. Um, then there's some fountain pens in here. This is a Schaefer's. No idea if these work, but these are items you can sell sometimes for 20, 30 bucks or put them in a lot. I've sold some fountain pens for like three, four hundred dollars before. They looked more along the lines of this one here. This is a Everhart or. This is an Eversharp. Um, I don't know how well you can see it. Uh, but people fix these up. Some of these pens uh, have Bakelite and real gold uh, nibs, which are the, the tip of it, are called nibs. Um, but I've got three here that are better ones, but they have some issues, and I'll probably put them a lot. So this was three bucks for these three here. Um, and I should get, say, 30 bucks or better for these three um, better ones. Um, and then I've got advertising pens. This is a trucking company. I've got a couple of those. Or actually, these are mechanical pencils. I'll probably put seventeen fifty on these mechanical pencils. Uh, Mower Brothers. This is a international consumer group or a, a tri-state consumer group. Um, again, seventeen fifty. Um, some of these pencils I may clean up and actually use. I love vintage mechanical pencils. Um, but either way, I'll put them in a lot, and I'll still get you know say four or five bucks for every one of these. Um, Pioneer Seeds, this is a vintage you know, farming one, still works, um, something like this, 1750. Um, let's see here, this is Superior Coach, it's a 30th anniversary, 1953. Uh, this company makes uh, hearse and things like that, and the coach vehicles. Um, this one's probably fairly collectible, I'll probably put 5750 on this pencil. Um, and then the last pencil itself is another, I think this is, yeah, trucking company. Transportation items always sell. Uh, at a dollar a piece and just the pencils, um, I've probably got, you know, 250 or better coming back on return on these. So that's the small items. Let's hop over to some records here. I'm going to do the 45s first. Um, I don't know if I'll go through every single one, but I'll pick some highlights. Um, now on to some of the uh, records I have here. Um, I got a bunch of records and something I never really run into. These are all from Chile, the country of Chile. Um, should be fairly good. Some of these early ones from oddball countries like this sell very well. I have no idea on these. Um, some of the Chile ones were hundreds of dollars. I'm putting 75 a piece on these. I'm not going to even try to... Um, look up too much more than that. I'm just going to put 75 in an auction and see what happens on these. Now let's focus these a little better here and zoom in just a hair so you can see what we're talking about. Um, Enrique Guzman. Um, I've seen the name. Popsyc has some of these similar ones on here. So, But again, it depends on the exact specific disc um, as to the value. So just because it's the same artist doesn't mean a thing. The actual song itself is what's important. Um, there's some nice imports in here again. A lot of these are from Chile. 
Um, it has the original European center. All the vintage or records from other countries have this center like this if it's vintage or even they make them like this still to, to this day. Um, that way you didn't need the spindle adapter and the overseas ones. But all these ones like this, I'm going to put 75 bucks on them at auction price and see what happens. Um, all these here again, more chili ones. Um, no, I'm not going to try to pronounce the names. I haven't uh, heard too much about most of these people. There's only a few comps, uh, comparables to compare them to. Um, but for a dollar a record here, um, I'm probably pretty much guaranteed to make a ton of money on these. Um, some of them even have the original sleeve on it. You can see the Columbia sleeve. Um, nice, decent stack here. I'll just kind of uh, flip through. Menez, Jordan. Some of these had local hits, you know, in America too. Um, Tony Villar, he had some American hits. American label, a company label name, but again, these are from Chile. Um, now we're going to pop to a soul record here, Frank Polk, In the Ring. Um, this one's fairly scarce, doesn't show up very often. Let's zoom in a little better here. Oh, there we go, Les, we got it fixed a little better, but 57.50 on this one. Um, again, uh, I put posties on everything. I try to look up everything ahead of time. Um, as soon as I get them, I'll either know the price or know what I want to get. Um, that way, I don't have to actually price everything. Um, this is a Memphis garage. It's fairly scarce. I should get, say, $59.99. I'm going to put on it and probably get $45. Um, these sell constantly. It's many uh, comps on it. Um, here's an Elvis one, and I put this one in here. I get these quite often. They're not worth much money, most of the Elvis one, but this one has a silver line. You can see on both sides of it. It's on both sides of the label as well. This is a first press, the early ones. These usually command a little higher price than the normal ones, so I usually only buy the ones with the silver lines on them um, in an excellent condition. Um, this one's going to have, I'm going to put 24.50 and just take whatever on it. I should do fairly well. Uh, spinners, I would get $9.99 probably out of this one. It's a scarcer one, but not worth a ton of money. Uh, let's see here. 13th floor elevators. Um, this one shows up fairly often, but it's still worth about 20 bucks. Um, you can see oddball labels, oddball songs. Um, this one I have no idea. I'm going to have to throw this one in the turntable. I haven't done that yet as I just got these. Um, something different. We'll see what happens. Um, maybe it'll be a high price one. Maybe it'll be something funky. Who knows? Uh, move on here. Leon Smith. Now this is a rockabilly. I again try to write what kind of music it is and write some prices on it. Uh, Little 40 Ford. That's the name of it. You can hear most of these on uh, YouTube if you want to listen for them. Um, that's usually what I do to tell what kind of music it is. This is a pricey. This is a funk jazz. Smoke gets in your eyes. Um, this one alone I would probably say I will get say 100, 150 bucks on it. I'm going to put 150 and probably take somewhere um, in the 100, 150 range. Um, here's a EP. This is from uh, 77 Sunset Strip. Let's focus it again here as we go down again. It will get out of focus, so I will have to fix it. I can't find this one up there. I'm going to put 45 and just take whatever on it. If it sets a while, it sets a while. Annette Funicello, um, $9.99, Pineapple Express. Uh, here's a Rockabilly, um, James O. Gwynn. Um, I haven't heard of this one before. I did listen to it on YouTube. Um, I'll get $17.50 range for this one. Uh, let's move it down. Um, here's a local Toledo. This label shows up here. It was pressed here probably about 10 miles from where I'm at. Um, the Ohio Rockabilly, I'll probably get $27.50 at least. I'm going to put this one up on an auction and just take whatever. Um, I don't know on some of these. This is a rare one. It doesn't show very much. I can't find a comparable. Um, so who knows? Uh, another Ohio Rockabilly. Um, this one I can find a comparable. $75 I'm putting on this one. It's Bill Hamby. Um, I think I just had one of these just the other day, actually. These show up fairly often around here. That is an Ohio label, so... Um, here's another one of those auction ones, Pat Henry. Um, let's see here. I'll take it out so you can kind of see. It has the center still. This is a uh, chilly one. Um, this is an auction, because I don't know what it's going to go for. Who knows? Uh, same with the rest of this down here. This is going to be an auction here. I have no idea what it's going to go for. Uh, let's put that there. Um, another one, auction. Some of these foreign ones go very, very well, so it's hard to say. Foreign pressings of like Elvis and stuff from some oddball country sell very well. Um, and she's fairly known. This is um, uh, a fairly good one, I hope. Um, but you can kind of see. Let's zoom back in. 
Um, these are auctions again because I have no idea what to put on these. Uh, but these are auctions again. I have no idea. This is Neil Sedak. It could be a rare one. Um, it was pressed in Chile. I'm sure there's not many of these around in this country. Um, so we're going to put $29.99 at an auction and take whatever. Um, here's a teen promo. $37.50 range I'll put on it. It's Mark Stone. Um, here's a promo, Bill Parsons. Uh, $27.50 I'll put on this one. Lloyd Reese, Poetry in Motion. Um, I know the song. I didn't know uh, Lloyd Reese sung it either, but $12.50. Uh, this is Wilbert Harrison. This is Canadian only press. Let's fix some of these stickers here. Um, this one's probably going to be in the 50 range. I'm putting $57.50 on it. Uh, most of these haven't been cleaned up, so they will be cleaned up and they will look a little better. Al Wilson, this is a, a harder to get one, the Snake, 1999. Uh, let's see here so you can see the label. Uh, another chilly one. Um, this one, 34.50. I could find a comparable to this song. Uh, 34.50 on this one too. Uh, same thing. There's a comparable to compare it to. So kind of get the idea. Uh, another one, 34.50. Um, this group I found comparables. They're fairly expensive. I'm putting 75 in an auction on this one. Same with this one. Auction, 75 bucks. Um, let's see who it is. There you can see the name at the bottom. I've never heard of most of these people. I will always take a chance on these at a dollar a piece. Um, worst case scenario, I throw them in a lot and I'll still get my money back out of them. Um, but here's one last one. Uh, Strangers, this is an American group called The Strangers. I don't know if this is them or not, but if it is, it's probably worth some money too. So um, that's the 45s. And we're going to flip over to 78s now. Okay, so on to the 78s. Um, this one's actually a foreign one, and I don't mess with too many foreign ones um, in 78s because a lot of them just don't sell. Let's see if I can focus it just a little better there. Uh, but this one I looked up. There's comparable from the same artist. This one's going to be worth in the 50 range. I'm putting 57.50 on this one. Uh, you can see my postie. Um, this one here is a Jump Blues, Duke Henderson, um, Lucy Brown's the title, it's the stronger hit of these two. Again, 57.50, this is like 1950s, early rocker. Um, here's Roy uh, Hogson, it's a rockabilly bopper, not worth a ton of money, but I'll still get, say, 20 bucks out of this one. Uh, next one here, Hank Williams, I've had many Hank Williams recently, um, another 27.50. In fact, I'm going to just throw these two in together. I think one of these has a rim chip on it again. Um, throw these two together. I just had some in my last haul. Um, here's a bopper, another bopper, um, Detour Pan American. It's an oddball label. It says Hillbilly, but it's a country bopper. The Sunshine Boys. This one should this one should sell fairly well, $34.50. We'll take this one out so you can see. Now this is a scroll victor label. This is earlier than the Batwing in some instances. Um, I've showed you the Batwing in another video. Um, let's see if we can get it dead center here. It's kind of hard to figure out. Um, this one here is a scroll victor because it looks like a scroll around the edges of it. Um, and this is kind of what you want to look for for the earlier victors. This is like 1915 to the 20s. Um, 34 50 I should get on this one. It's the Benny Goodman Trio. Um, fairly scarce group for him. Uh, most of the time they just say Benny Goodman. Um, but the label is good. That's the key part. I'm not going to take all these out of their little sleeves. Um, if they're in them, they're just not worth a ton of money. Um, here's one I've sold, I don't know, four, five, six of these last year alone. I've sold one of these this year. Uh, Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters. This is the Three Caballeros. Um, the only reason this one's worth money is because it was from the Disney movie, Walt Disney movie, The Three Caballeros. Um, and I always sell this one because of that. If you don't list Disney in the title, though, it's not going to sell that easily. Um, but put Walt Disney Film, Animation, it will sell. I'm going to put 20 bucks on it, basically. Um, let's see here. Let me get it off so you can see the label. Um, these Early King, if they're this color of label, they're usually just country, so that kind of gives you an idea. If they're a blue label, um, they're usually rock or R&B soul. Um, but this is an oddball uh, Delmore Brothers. Um, this is like a bop or two. $27.50 I'm going to put on this one. Move on to the next one. Um, this one I'm putting 75 r and Blues. It's an instrumental. It's an oddball one, Fat Meat and Greens. This one should sell very quickly, um, probably 50s-ish. Um, somewhere in that range. 
Um, I haven't seen this one. I knew the title though because I have had it on a 45, just not on a 78 before. Uh, 75, as I said, I'm putting on that one. Here's another $75 one. Uh, Kenny Watts and Jumpin' Buddies doing the thing. Now this is like uh, early 50s. This is probably a jump jive. 75 bucks. I'm gonna put on this one. I'm gonna, as you can see, the prices add up very quickly on these records. They can be double listed or triple listed. These are all gonna go up on Amazon and eBay, if not as well on Discogs. Um, this is a fairly scarce one, 57.50. Firecracker Stomp. I've heard this song before. Um, it's a bopper. It will sell. Oddball Label. Uh, let's see here. Here's a really good one here in the condition that this is in. Um, and you'll see who it's by. Um, this is an early Chuck Berry. Uh, I don't get many Chuck Berries. The Downbound Train. Um, this is a very early rocker in very nice condition. A similar one to this one sold in the 150 to 175 range. I'm putting 175 on this one and uh, probably wouldn't take less than 125 on it. Um, and again, a dollar a piece for each one of these records. That's why I make so much money on these. I don't pay much for them. Most people don't think they're worth anything. Um, here's an early uh, hillbilly one from a Detroit label. Now these are fairly scarce, this label for the oddball ones. I'm putting 145 on this and I'll just take whatever I can get out of it. Um, I think I've got another one. Yep, here's another one on the same label. I have no idea what this one's worth. There's some on this label, again, as I said, that are worth a ton of money. Eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars. Um, Firewater Polka. Firewater, if you're not familiar, this is basically moonshine. Um, another early one, this is probably like a country hillbilly stomper, kind of like a, a bopper, uh, almost a rockabilly, but not. Um, and polka doesn't mean it's a, a Polish one, that's just a term they use. So, again, who knows what this one's worth? I'll probably put $99 um, as an auction, just take whatever and see what it goes for after 10 days. Um, here's another early one. This is a doo wop speedo. Um, if you don't know Speedo, um, it's been in a few movies. Um, I know the song very well. My parents used to listen to it when I was younger. Um, but this is a nice early soul doo-wop. Um, $27.50. I should sell this for at least $20, bucks, I would guess, in the condition. Uh, let's see here. What's the next one? Uh, Andrew Sisters, Christmas Island. Um, again, Christmas ones sell, especially like this. The Andrew Sisters usually sell fairly well. I think I got a bunch of them. I'm going to put 20 bucks, basically a piece on them. Um, I think this is another Andrew Sisters. Pennsylvania Polka, this one should sell again fairly well, 20 bucks. Uh, let's see here, Carmen Miranda and the Andrew Sisters, the Matador, 20 bucks again. Uh, now this one's a saxophone, this one's a, this person has a, uh, a jazz record out too, Lynn Hope, um, it's a gentleman, um, does some very fine jazz with saxophone. The, this one here, I've got a couple of these. I'm probably going to put 75 bucks on it. It looks like it's never been played, and we will take it from there and see what we get out of it. Um, here's another, as I said, of the same one. Um, 75 bucks a piece on these. I've got two of them. Um, here's another one by him. The Aladdin label usually sells fairly well, especially these early R&B, jive, jazz, saxophone ones. Um, this one should do very well, too. 57.50. Um, now here's a couple. I'm going to put these four together. They're not worth a ton of money, um, but as a lot, I'll probably put, uh, say, 40 bucks or so on these. Let me focus a little bit. Fats Domino, another 78. Another Fats Domino. Um, Otis Williams. Um, he was in a few groups, um, but this one should do fairly well in this lot. As I said, I'm putting uh, these four. Roy Hamilton will go in there, too. They're all... Um, by soul performers, um, so we'll see what happens. Excellent condition for all of them. Now, California Ramblers, I'm going to take this one out so you can see it. This is an early Columbia ribbon, um, ribbon because of the uh, ribbon you see. Some people call it a banner. I've always heard it called a ribbon by everybody I talk to. Uh, California Ramblers, I always look for it. It's one of the hot jazz ones. It's an early one. Uh, it's record number 49 on this Columbia label. Um, and it should sell fairly well. Um, linger a while. I'm going to put 75 on this one here. This is an early one, circa 1910-ish, probably somewhere in that range. Early for jazz. Um, let me put this back in the sleeve. Um, Condition-wise, um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to see. You can kind of see the tracks. Um, it's probably about a V plus to E looking at it. But I'll have to go into that in a separate video, I think. 
Let's put it away and move on to the next ones. Um, uh, this is a one-sider. Um, I've talked about one-sided discs. This is a fancier one. Um, it literally says Victor around the edge on the outside on the back. Um, not playable at all. It's just for looks. Um, but some of these early Victrola records sell very well. Uh, this one here, I'm, I'm going to put 2750. I believe this is a violin, yeah. Some early violin always sells. I don't stray away from the classical because we do sell quite a bit of classical 78s as well. Um, we even sell LPs, classical LPs, for very good money too. So it just depends on the disc. Um, again, this one has the same back as the one I just showed you. Um, this one here is another violin. Jacques uh, Thimbald. Um, fairly a well-known person, um, 75 bucks on this one here, um, but I've got a couple by the same person. I think I'll put 75 bucks a piece on them and see what happens. Again, this is a fancy back, one-sided disc. Uh, now we're on to some of the bat wings here, which I've talked about in other videos too. This is the bat wing, um, Victor, because it looks like a bat wing on the top. And 27.50. This is a Paul Whiteman. Um, I've sold many Paul Whitemans. Um, this one here, the condition is like an E minus. It's just awesome looking condition. May not be able to tell it from the video, but it is a nice condition one. Um, here's a Bluebird. Some of these Bluebird here, they come in two different colors of label. One's called a Buff, where it looks like um, it's a light yellowish tan. Um, and then there's this one here. A lot of Bluebirds go for a thousand or better bucks. I've sold many Bluebirds for, say, three, four, five hundred dollars um, in many occasions, so I always look for this label. I don't know this song, but I'm going to put $29.99 on it. Uh, it's Vincent Lopez. I've heard of Vincent Lopez. I've had others by him. Not a huge mover, but it's still worth a while to get. Um, still should get 27 bucks out of it. Here's Bing Crosby and Nightingale sang in uh, Berkeley Square. Now, Glenn Miller has this same song, and his one's worth like 40 The Bing Crosby, I'm going to put twenty-seven fifty on it. I've had this one before. That's about what it goes for. Um, here's an Ozzy Nelson. Um, if you're not familiar with Ozzy and Harriet, it was a TV show in, say, the early 50s. Their son was Ricky Nelson. And Ricky Nelson had a bunch of songs um, in the 50s and even had songs all the way up in the 70s. The 70s song he had with Garden Party. Uh, he was killed in a car or in a plane crash, I believe. Um, but he had a tw two twin sons who actually are the group Nelson from the 90s. So his whole family, his parents... And him and his grandkids were all musicians. They all have records out. Um, most Ozzy Nelsons I sell uh, with this label fairly well. This is an early Brunswick label. Uh, let's say 40s or so. This is probably before, maybe even the 30s. This is before he had the TV show, though. Um, and before his son Ricky was on it. So uh, let's move on. 37.50. Nilo Mendez, um, Congos and stuff like that sell fairly well, especially some of these early 40s, 30s and 40s Deca labels. Twenty-seven fifty on this one. Uh, again, dollar a record for every one of the records you see. Uh, this is a Rockabilly, Keep a Talking Baby, uh, Gene O'Quinn. Um, I've had this one before. I believe the last one I got 45. This one's a little better. This one's about an E minus. I should put uh, 57.50 and get somewhere in that range for it. Uh, we're almost done with the records. The Joe DeMars, um, this is $27.50, um, this is a kind of a teen rock or bop, focus just a little better, uh, Starlighters here, um, this is another early one, this is a vocal group, um, $34.50, somewhere in that range, um, and the last one is a country bopper, this is, um, on the Red King, as I said, this is Hank Penny, Red Hot Mama, and Ice Cold Papa. Now this one sells fairly well. I'm going to put 57.50 on it and just take what I can get. Um, but that's about it on these. Um, and as you can see, there's a ton of money here. It may not look like much. It may not be something that you're going to immediately be able to go out and get. But if you see a bunch of these, eventually you're going to know which labels have the better stuff on it and what color and what they look like. And once you start picking out the labels, you can cut your time down a bunch and only look for specific labels or the oddball stuff that you don't see all the time. Um, and then you can go from there. Start looking them up. Start seeing what you can find. 45s are easier to find. 78s, those sell better. So uh, that's what I have. Uh, that's my picks for today. Again, two stops. My uh, I went to the thrift store first because it's the first place I go to and order. Um, and then I hit my picker afterwards. And again, I got $246 in everything. 
Um, and I got a few extra little things that I'm not going to probably show you because they're clothing that I'm going to keep. But um, it was just like 99 cents or a couple dollar shirts. Um, but other than that, that's what I got. Again, it's going to be like $2,000 or more profit. I would minimum, I'm saying, just because of these needles, the needles I had, and cartridges for the hi fis and some of the records were some decent records this time. Um, well, actually, we've been getting a lot of good records lately. Records are just coming up. I don't know if it's summer again. Um, my son is now um, finished with the, his, the, the college work for this year, so our schedule is going to change up a little bit here, and we'll be doing some more um, actual picks, and I'll probably try and bring one of my kids with me or the wife, and we will do some video, I think. We're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to have the time while we're out, um, and you'll get to see a little something of like what's going on, see our ear, see what we look for. Um, and I'll kind of zoom in on some of those. I'm not sure um, to what extent, but we're going to try it and, and give it a shot and see. Um, and we'll go from there. Anything I, I've showed you is just common stuff for me that I see this kind of junk all the time. The records I run into all the time. Um, and if you look through enough records, you're going to find some good ones at some point. I guarantee it. Um, the little tiny items here I buy all the time. You can find them even at garage sales, the pencils and things like that. The little rubber toys. Um, Godzilla. I, I run across the Toho's all the time and I run across the little figures and most of what I showed you are stuff that you should be able to find. It's just going to take you some hunting around, some asking, looking at some oddball places, checking out the little junk stores that you never thought you'd go into like resale shops or secondhand shops, you know, in other neighborhoods that you just might not have thought to go into. Look through the phone book, look online um, and track these places down. That's what it's going to take you. You're going to have to get up and look for these places. They're not just going to come out at you. The more you look, the more you investigate, the more you're going to find. Uh, well, there you go. That's the haul. Um, hopefully you saw something that you might run into, something to look for, um, some ideas on what to look for. Um, just have to look around and find it. Um, again, please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't, and tell a friend.